you said that this is a this is a different environment than those because it's got more lower income. Well, we also you also have a high traffic area, and you have more probably more security problems compared. Uh, and knowing um, how, uh, uh, again, uh, I just gave you the example of what happened at the Metro, and they wanted the Type 21 uh, for the uh, CBS, and they ended up with the Type 20 because uh, the community out uh, didn't want us. We also are, are hurting other small businesses uh, when a, a large chain comes in, um, too. So there's a lot of things, a lot of factors that, that have to be looked at. We don't want to see our small business because we don't want to see much more vacancies along Market Street because uh, the, uh, it's hard to get a cigarette license, it's hard to get a liquor license, and those that have them want to keep them, and if there's no customers, then they eventually close because um, a larger store comes along and can't, they can't compete with. And that's what happened when uh, the Walgreens over there on Beth House Street happened. It uh, changed the whole environment where all the small uh, liquor stores that were nearby within a couple block radius is all closed. So it does have an impact. And people say, oh, great, it's Walgreens. But no, oh, great, we're losing our small businesses. And the small businesses, although you are a pretty good uh, uh, community um, involvement, but uh, the, the small businesses are also that way, too. Um, and the bigger businesses may not do that because they are making money for their um, yeah. stockholders. Well, I, th I think at this point in time, my experience with community, and, and it sounds like your experience with the community so far has been nothing but relentlessly positive. And I see no reason to expect anything different than what we've experienced in the other neighborhoods um, in regards to what's going to happen within our store. Um, we've been operating these stores for a very long time. As he said, he's, he's very experienced here in San Francisco. I've been working in San Francisco with Trader Joe's for a very long time as well. Um, and uh, we've seen a lot of great things happening at the store and for the market. We're really excited about it. And you know, while there may be some you know, some individual concerns with regards to our liquor, liquor license, I think the greater community uh, hasn't gotten so excited because of the other stuff that we sell. I think that they're excited about everything that we have going Well, I, I think the thing is, are you going to be the store manager, or, or are you just a, a manager of another a branch? I'm going to be the store manager of that branch. You will be the yes. store manager. Okay. Uh, well, the, the, I, got, I, I missed that part. But, but still, the, the thing is being aware of uh, the existing problems uh, that have existed and uh, like I said, I've been in San Francisco. I've been but anyway, we're going to probably talk about this offline. I didn't really want to get into having a long conversation about it, but but we do have ongoing reservations. Uh, Marvis, as well. Um, what cautions are you going to use to uh, not overstep other stores? Because Target selling beer and wine. There are a number of small wine shops that have opened up um, over the years in, in and around um, 3rd to 5th Street. A lot of the hotels have wine stores inside the hotels. Uh, Macy's has wine in its basement. Um, so how one's, how's your uh, quality of going to compare to theirs? And two, um, are, how is the pricing of your store going to make sure by putting out uh, wine, which we ran into with um, Rite Aid. They put out really cheap blocked up um, to cut corners on everybody else's business, and including themselves out of business. Um, so what kind of guarantee are you going to have that you're going to sell quality products and not step on anybody else's toes down here? Well, in regards to quality, we don't sell anything that isn't of the highest quality, period. Well, I, I know at that part I, I'm not yeah. worried about. But right. I, I'm concerned a lot about spirits when I talk about quality uh, because there's some really inexpensive spirits. People seem to really like, especially down here. We don't sell anything of that nature. We don't sell single shot uh, liquor. We don't sell anything in a, in a bottle smaller than a 750 milliliter. And when it comes to you know, other businesses within the community, we can only control what we do in our own four walls. Uh, where people decide to shop is, is ultimately their response, their responsibility. It's up to them. Um, and so we're going to be a responsible part of the community. We're going to do what we do inside our four walls the best that we can. Um, but where people decide to shop is, is up to them. Yes. Uh, 
Hi, um, I wanted to have a question because um, now I know that in Stonestown, you, you, your uh, store has escalators going from where the premises of Trader Joe's is up and down, plus an elevator. So the people who walk, uh, who will be going into your store, will be coming from Market Street, uh, not from Fourth Street. They'll be coming in from Fourth Street, down the escalator, possibly even getting on an elevator, and then when they leave, they will be going up. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Trader Jones? Well, thank you for your time and support, everybody. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh, we, we can complete it and we can taxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, the next item on the agenda is MTA. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Bradley Dunn. Uh, I'm the district. Uh, sorry. Over here, little, okay, fine. That's Hi, great. everybody. I'm Bradley Dunn. I'm uh, the District 6 liaison for the SFMTA, uh, which uh, a part of which is Muni. Uh, we also do, uh, you know, take care of and uh, you know, you know, Vision Zero is a big program that we're pushing uh, to keep people safe on streets. Um, you guys uh, reached out to us, uh, you know, and uh, to ask us about um, Eddie and Ellis Street. Um, so I brought the project manager uh, here uh, to do a little presentation, talk to you guys, answer some of your concerns. Um, you know, uh, you've seen me here at meetings before. Uh, if you have any desire to have more of these presentations in the future. Um, you know, uh, you know, Michael or you know anybody can get in contact with me. Uh, you guys have my email, uh, my phone number, and we'll schedule something uh, similar. Um, so I uh, well, brought that up. Uh, we now hear as a part of the MTA, we also hear on Church Street they want to put bicycle lanes. In other words, posting these things up on the on the uh, thing, but not having this is not. Yeah. So the, okay. So. And we're not going to have a meeting until Jan January or February or something like that. So, you know, that means you're not doing that adequate, but just posting somewhere. So, assume everybody's going to have to know as so, I mean, we, I mean, a part of the reason why we do the posting is to inform people of what's going on. So, when you, so, so again, um, you know, I, I think, you know, you're, you're, you can't ask for us to be, all, you know, Always in contact with everybody before we go out and post to let people know that we're trying to get in contact. No, no, with I just everybody. wanted to bring up there's another. I mean, we we are doing projects all over, you know, District Six to try to make streets safer for everyone, bicyclists, um, you know, pedestrians, uh, people that use transit, uh, and drivers all like, um, you know, the you know the Tenderloin especially is. Uh, a neighborhood uh, with uh, that is both a community of concern, where we have a lot of low-income folks, a lot of senior citizens, um, but we also have some of the most, uh, you know, the streets with the highest number of injuries um, in San Francisco. Um, so we are uh, looking at uh, projects throughout District Six uh, to try to improve street safety. Uh, and uh, so just before we get to, uh, I just want to say something. Yes. Probably 80% of people don't read polls in this neighborhood. They don't because they are paying attention to them and their immediate surroundings so they don't get robbed. Okay. This is an extremely dangerous neighborhood to walk in. Um, and uh, we have no criminal element from all of the Bay Area down here. We have to be very careful. So people don't stop and read polls. I think what needs to be done is just a suggestion to whoever does the power. If you put something in the Central City Extra, most of the neighborhood reads that. And you also get people uh, who, yeah. if you go to Michael, post it on, on wherever he's posting. I mean, so I, I realize it's inconvenient, but I'm saying because of the nature of the people, a lot of this neighborhood's disabled. Half this building never leaves the building. They don't know these things because it's not, they don't let them know. You can let TNDC know. TNDC has 39 buildings. They can we, broadcast it. We, we do meet with TNDC but, about, but, you know, but a meeting, number Meeting with TNDC and talking with them about letting the people in their <laughs> buildings know because there's no notice in this building of this meeting okay, until I mean, we put it out. 
like at, at the same time though, I mean there are, there are thousands of buildings throughout the, throughout San Francisco, and we can't put a notice in. This is a disabled building. Reasonable accommodation of the disabled is the law. Right. And to reasonably accommodate the disabled people of this building and the other buildings in this neighborhood that are disabled. So it will be taken the benefit of that you should make an effort to reach out to us. So, you know, we, we are making effort to reach out to many groups that serve the disabled, like senior and disabled action. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we are, you know, this is, this is a city of tons of, you know, of, you know seven, or 800, you know, 850,000 people. Um, you know, we are, you know, can't talk, you know, talk to every person. We do our best. I, I come here to these meetings. If you guys have specific concerns about you know, certain things, I'm an access point. You know, when I was here, you know, two two meetings ago, um, you know, uh, you guys asked comments you know, for things. Uh, I'm bringing over the project manager to come talk to you guys. If you want, I can go find the project manager for Turk, and we can schedule something to talk to you, uh, you know, about Turk. Again, we are, you know, we are looking at making improvements to streets all across the district because these are some of the uh, streets with the highest, uh, you know, they're the, um, you know, the high injury corridors uh, where seniors, disabled folks, um, you know, are most at risk of uh, being injured and, uh, you know, in, in a traffic, uh, in a traffic collision. So that's why we're making these changes. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, Okay. Well, I mean, like I said, if, if that's a concern, folks can... So, Bradley, yes. this also is a very dense neighborhood, and they also have transit needs of the street. Yes. In, including, not, you know, including vehicles other than, other than bicycles. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're, you're going to have to weigh that off. You're going to have, there's going to be a trade-off there. It's well, so... True that there, it's true that there are injuries here, but it's also true that we need the streets. Yeah. Uh, we, we, you know, we uh, believe in, in the movement of people and, uh, you know, through transit, through providing, you know, successful transit, uh, through, you know, through bicycles, through pedestrian, um, and, you know, a big part of, you know, the problem is that people are speeding through the tender line, right? Um, you know, on a lot of these one-way streets. Uh, the middle of the night, yeah. You know, people are speeding through the tender line and, you know, we're trying to design the streets so that they're safer for everyone. Please, cars block the street off here. Only yeah, not lane. not only speeding through there. During certain hours of the day, I live on Ellis. During certain hours of the day, you you have to zigzag to cross the street through traffic, and that always worries me. So something backs up. So uh, this gentleman had his hand raised, and then I'll go to you if that's okay. Okay, which name, sir? Reggie. Reggie. Okay. How much money will it cost to have? Uh, well, I'm going to let uh, the project manager talk about that in a moment. Um, but Next I, and, and, okay. Um, now, I heard that Taylor Street was probably the most more dangerous of all the streets that's down in the in this situation, right? And I was just wondering, why would you, why would you, why would you waste so much money on, on, on any street when, when the real problems are on Taylor Street? Um, I don't know that Taylor Street is more problematic well, than, you, you than see, Eddie. I, I, okay. So again, um, you know, I, my job is to, you know, is a communications person. My job is to work with project managers to talk about their projects. So I, I am not a, an expert on trap. You know, I'm not an expert on, and, and we can, you know, we can talk with the experts, but I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert on the, the, order, the situation on Taylor versus Eddie and why that decision was made. I think in order for that to take place, I and mean, when you come and send for somebody, you should actually have some information about it also. So that way you can read along with you. So we're, we're going to have some information. Okay. But again, I'm going to try to take some general questions, and then we can turn it over to Manito. So will you talk about the survey uh, with the cars that, that are putting all these, what's not wasting some money here? But it is waste of spending when the survey comes back. Talking about it. more cars on the street than ever. We talk That's about that. what, what because I, I I live on turf, right? And it's it's a lot of traffic on that yeah. street. So I'm just trying to figure out: is it going to be a waste of money to what? You going to get one? I mean, is it just going to be one way? I mean, one street 
So for the cars, it could be because you have to balance it out somehow because it it only get worse, I think. I, so I, I don't know what survey that you're referring to in I'm terms of the news. Okay, so I, I think this there was a couple of weeks ago something that said traffic is is increased in the Bay Area. I mean, we in San Francisco we've gone to almost eight hundred fifty thousand people. I mean, when I was growing up, it was seven hundred twenty five thousand yeah. people here in the city. Um, you know, a lot of those people, uh, you know, have places to go. So that means that there are more bicyclists, there are more cars, there are more people taking transit. Um, at the SFMTA, we've done a really good job of meeting one of our goals, our mode share goal is uh, what we call it, um, where more people are bicycling or walking and are taking transit um, than are driving in single uh, occupancy automobiles. Well, so 54% of people take a means of travel other than driving in their own car. By themselves. Um, by themselves in yeah, trips in San Francisco, um, which is what we're trying to encourage because if you might have noticed, um, there's not a lot of San Francisco. Uh, we have very, you know, a lot of people, and so you can fit more people onto a bus, you can fit more people when they're walking, you can fit more people when they're biking, and all of those means are safer um, than uh, humans driving cars but at 35 miles an hour. Are there going to be any like, pilot programs because bicyclists are kind of getting ridiculous with their driving? Not worse than cars, but you know, you cross the street, you see a bicycle just zoom through. Any pilot um, lights going up to like. Uh, yeah, my son was complaining about that. And to make them stop. Drive. So I mean, and, and instead of them thinking that they can just run right on through when the cars are stopped, but the but the cars are so um, you know, last year, thirty people were killed in San Francisco streets by cars and motorcycles. What about bicycles? Zero, about bicycles. Zero people I'm were killed by bicycles. Older people who cannot. Cross I, I, the I understand, but bicycles. what I'm saying though is I, I understand what you're saying. Last year, thirty people. Uh, you know, approximately 30 people died in collisions between cars and, and, and motorcycles. Zero, and zero bicycles. Zero before, the zero bicycles. We're trying to reduce the number. Walking around here, going to senior citizens. Like like I'm sorry. I think that uh, well, that question. It's a good. You know, it's a good question. It's a great question. But I think MTA's the wrong people to ask. Okay. That, should, that should be directed at the police meeting. Okay. The police Can I uh, emphasize uh, again? You, it's, it's every day, it's every intersection you have, the, the cars are stopped in the crosswalk and you have to go in and out, one's over here, one's over here, one's over here, you have to go in and out, sometimes you have to go out into the oncoming traffic to get around these cars. I see wheelchairs that cannot get across the street. And so, this is every day. And then, they, and then they took away a lane down there by this parking lot by St. Anthony's to make it a bike lane. Uh, and that just even- So you're talking about down by the theater? The Golden Gate Theater. Well, no, right there by St. Anthony's, people turn and they go down to the freeway. They go down Sixth Street to the freeway. Mm -hmm. Right there, where the park, there's a parking lot there. St. Anthony's is here. There's a parking lot. That street, they took one of the lanes out and made it a bike lane, Golden and it's Gate. just even worse. Oh, yeah, so we're talking about Golden Gate. Yeah. So, um, so it's a couple things. Uh, so one, uh, a part of our Vision Zero program is that we are um, working with the police department. So we don't we do certain enforcement of actions, and the police department does other enforcement of actions. Um, we can't uh, enforce moving violations, um, for example. Um, but as a part of our Vision Zero program, uh, we've worked, you know, because this is a citywide effort to end traffic fatalities. Uh, the, we're working with the police department, um, you know, and as, as uh, one of the many partners with the, uh, you know. Uh, mayor's office, the office on disability, uh, uh, there's office of you know, seniors and disability, um, and also uh, Department of Public Health um, to uh, increase the amount of enforcement that's going on. Um, so I you keep know. saying the city can make a mint ticketing those people. Well, I mean, so that's the other thing. I mean, we're trying not to ticket low-income folks that are. Well, no, the people you know, that are that are. The, I think a lot of these people who work in San Francisco live outside the city and they're trying to get to the freeway as quick as possible and they don't care if you're trying to cross the street or not. So so like I said, um, we, we 
like are going to be like the city overall will be increasing enforcement moving forward. Yeah, so. I was born and raised here, and now that all these tall buildings are going up, there's going to be even more traffic because people are going to be living there or working there. And so, I mean, it's get worse. That's, uh, that's a big part of our goal to 